Hey, I'm Heather, and I like to do things. I might take something old and busted and turn it into something beautiful. I might just start from scratch, be a little creative, and make something useful. Whatever it is, it's going to be an adventure. So stick around and see what Heather did today. Oh, that was easy. For today's project, I'm going to be taking apart this stool that came with my very cheap dining set and making it over into a stool for my daughter's vanity that I redid. And this is how tall it's going to be. So this is going to be my like spacer for testing everything. Um, and that's, I'm just going to cut it to bits, sand it down. She needs a stool. She hasn't used that vanity since I redid it for her. So now I'm going to take it apart. Um, and this, like I said, it was a very cheap set. So I just took the pieces here apart. I actually had to regularly tighten these anyway. And once I got all of those screws out, this whole thing just popped out. And I immediately realized I should probably mark what went where. So I did that. And the pencil wouldn't show up. So I went and got a marker. <laughs> I made it work. Next up was to take these apart. Okay. There's, I thought it was just screws and maybe a dowel. So I'm taking the pocket screws out. Yeah, I never took the stickers off when I assembled it. I mean, I assembled these and I forgot how they were assembled. So I took this apart and immediately... Yep, I had a moment. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I had to think about it. I took a while thinking about it. I really just kind of stared into space for a little while. And what caused me to panic? Yeah, look, this right here. Ready? It was a mortise and tenon. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I can duplicate that. I don't know what I'm do. So I just put it all back together and walked away. I was like, nope, not doing it. Thought about it. Put the stool back together. Walked away. And then immediately picked it back up and decided, nah, I'll give it a try. At worst, I would lose one of my stools, which isn't really that big of a deal. There's only three of us and we would still have three stools. <laughs> so I cut one of the legs down to the size I wanted. I do not have a miter saw, but I do have this little miter box <laughs> that I used um, with a handsaw to cut everything straight. And once I cut one, I just lined each one up to make sure they were all the same size. And look how fast I am at cutting. <laughs> so fast. Okay, it actually didn't take that long, but whatever. And then each one I actually just checked to make sure I got them, which, you know, I did get them all pretty close. Close enough. And I was going to be adding these feet to it so you can level them if needed. So if it's kind of rocking. Did my little happy dance because I got them all cut. And they are, like, I mean, we're talking with millimeters of the same size. So the next step was to clean it. Because you can imagine this was a dining room table stool. It's filthy. It didn't matter how many times I clean stuff. There, it's just always... There's always something on it, like just crusted. I never even took all the stickers off. Whatever. So I shred it down with a really good degreaser and I scrubbed them. I rinsed and then scrubbed and rinsed and scrubbed. Also, something I've noticed, I'm not very good at centering anything. So that is a goal for 2024, center things. After I washed, rinsed and dried everything, I sanded. I did 120 grit. So it wasn't too aggressive. I'm really glad I did that. And then I just smoothed it out with 220. I really thought about taking all the finish off and
staining it, but I'm glad I didn't. The wood didn't look good for that. Um, I did round the edges. Also sold my sander down. But I rounded the edges a little bit so that after sanding, they weren't super like sharp edges. So I just rounded everything over with my sander. Same thing on the feet. I just gave them a little bit of a round over. Broke the edges is the correct term. You're not usually supposed to do it with a power sander, but I did. And after sanding, because that's the order you should do that, um, I tried recreating the mortise so this tenons would work, and I couldn't do it in a reasonable amount of time. So I just cut them off and decided I would do dowels, and that's how that would go. So I cut all the tenons off of these pieces, and then I tried to get a video of me marking the center, and I didn't. So I drilled, marked the center on all the legs, and drilled a hole for the feet to go into. Made enough for the feet to go into. And I do not remember what size drill bit I used. I should have written that down, but I didn't. I did have to make it bigger. And then there's a little plastic piece that you hammer in. I think I maybe should have made the hole a little bit bigger, but I didn't. And yes, I do have a big kid hammer. I just couldn't find it. So I used this one. <laughs> it worked fine. Okay, four. Outside, I'm using this. How old is this? I have no idea. Uh, years ago, my stepmom was getting paint samples for painting her back porch. Or door, not the porch. And this is one of the samples. She didn't want any more, so she gave me. Um, it's kind of thick, but it smells okay. It didn't have any odd discoloration. So I'm going to use that as the first coat have more I'm gonna do with it because you know it's my daughter but there we go and I'm actually using that one because hang on I may have just found a better paper. okay I found this one this sitting um I, had, I didn't want one that was too wide um you know, this isn't very big, so this should be fun. Um, and it does have a stain blocking primer, so hopefully I don't have to worry about bleed through or anything like that, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so I ended up doing two full coats of this paint. After the first coat, there was some bleed through, but the second coat, there was not. I was, did some experimenting and this was too slick for what I wanted to do with it. So I ended up, or I guess for what my daughter wanted, so I ended up going over it with a layer of that white rust -Oleum chalk paint that I had used on her dresser originally. So it's a bit more porous. Um, and notice I'm still not good at getting stuff centered, but you know. My daughter really wanted me to use the colors that I used on that Maximalist dresser and have it look similar to that. I tried some different things with dripping and other stuff and I just, I didn't, I didn't like it. So I decided to go with what I did on the Maximus dresser and just put the unicorn spit in some random spots and wiped it. And then you just set it to the side and let it dry and keep going. Um, you can see I did try wiping with a card and that didn't work well. I actually did some touch-ups on that part of that leg that you see. So I just tried placing it randomly and it's okay if they blend a little bit because except for the purple and the yellow, those should not blend. The other colors, if they blend, it makes a pretty color, so it's okay. And you can see some of the experimenting I did. It didn't turn out well. So I used this full strength instead of watered down. I just don't think it looked as good on the white background when it, I used it watered down. Which you can use the Unicorn Spit watered down. It just didn't look good on this one. So you could also, I could also have taken more time and 
done one color at a time and then gone back and forth but since the area was so small I just didn't do that so I did say the purple and the yellow shouldn't mix see it kind of it's not as pretty it just is not to take the seat cover off it was just taking these tables out I just used a little scraper metal one so I could get the point under there and then went through I wasn't worried about tearing this fabric I wasn't gonna reuse it but I didn't want to leave all the staples in so I just got that under there pried it out and then took some needle nose pliers and pulled them all out um, I think I ended up leaving like one staple in maybe two but for the most part they came out pretty easy the wood is pretty soft so it wasn't it wasn't too bad and now is that point in the video where I ask if you were enjoying this video please hit the like button because that does help me out and helps get my video in front of more people and if you'd like to see more content like this please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you get notifications for when I release a new video and you can find um, all my links for buy me a coffee, Amazon wishlist, anything like that, that are other ways to support my channel down in the description below. And thank you so much for your support. Okay, so the footage I needed to show you how I did the legs disappeared. <laughs> I was out of storage space, but I didn't realize it. So I used the legs as a template so I could see like where the higher cross piece had been and then where the lower would have been. And what I did was I used the cross piece and I lined up like where the tenon let I cut off, like where the top of it, and I drilled a dowel to go to line up with that. Because then that would line up. If I drilled it up top, it would line up with this. So everything would be good. And then I used my little self centering doweling jig that I got when you're my birthday, I'm pretty sure. Maybe in Christmas. They're really close together. Um, and I just drilled the little hole for the dowel. And I did this like piece by piece. So I assembled everything piece by piece. And what I did was I did the two legs with the higher piece. And I just laid this on the leg and drew kind of eyeballed where the line should be. Put my doweling jig on there, lined it up, drilled the hole. And then I attached the two leg pieces with the higher cross pieces. So I had two like sets and then let those dry for a little bit so the glue is a little bit more set. And then I did the lower piece again just using this as a template like where should it be and did the same thing. Just kind of assembled it as I went. It worked really well. The only thing I ran into was um, I did split one of the legs by forcing the dowel which I know better than to do but I did it anyway. So I had to clamp that for the wall. Otherwise, it sucked together really well. It holds it sturdy, and I didn't have to do another like mortise into the other legs. I tried, and I did not make that work well. So the dowel works really well. So that's what I did. I just don't have any footage of it. For recovering the seat, I had this um, heavier upholstery fabric left over from some gifts I made a couple years ago. Little trash buckets for the car. Everybody got one for Christmas. Um, I thought that would look nice for this stool. So that's what I decided to use. Can I never find my scissors? Look, I paid attention to getting everything centered and not putting my arm in the way of the shot. I am killing it for this like one shot. <laughs> Not even fabric scissors. Is trimming up the excess. I mean, I want to make sure I have enough, but not too much. But at the same time, excess is harder to cut off. I just use my staple gun to attach it. I 
Except for that time because I shot the staple in the hole that's right there. So, yay me! So from then on, I paid attention where the holes were and just ran staples um, to make sure it went evenly. It wasn't pulled too tight in any spots. Um, and it was secure all the way around. I did not use near as many staples as they had originally. And just kind of moved everything, pulled everything until I had it where it wanted, where I wanted it. That's, that made more sense. And then for the corners, I really should have paid more attention and folded them. It's like there was folded, two folded corners on two of the sides. Instead, there's one folded corner on all four of the sides. Whatever. Looks nice. See? Isn't it pretty? And cushiony? Ta-da! Okay, so here I'm putting the feet in, which is easy to do, except I, I couldn't twist them that well, so I had to undo it. But look, right here, can you see all the little designs on there in the white unicorn spit? I just used the tip. My daughter was like, it'd be really cool if you did it. So I did that, and I made the little designs. And then I liked it so much that I spray painted the middle pieces black and did the same thing there with the colors. <laughs> I did two, nope, three coats of shellac because it is quick and easy to spray and fairly idiot proof, which at this point I felt I needed. So it made it look really nice. All the colors popped. It is gorgeous. Look at that. It fits with that vanity so well. And yes, we 100% had to clean before getting that shot. And look, you can see that just one corner is folded there, but whatever. Um, look at this. All the just dots and swirls. That's all it is. With Unicorn Spit, the colors really pop against that black background. The white is adorable. It's glittery and sparkly. And the floor is dirty. Don't look at that. But it is just perfect. And it fits my daughter's personality. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned to find out what Heather did next time.